Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spit in his eye well, he gave me balls, but I can see between To a dusty yard and a long gone green They call that freedom, if you know what I mean And I drown my sorrows, but the whiskey's gone I'm sober again Hello everybody, welcome to Lone Bangers. I'm Matty, joined tonight by Colin and Jamie uh, Colin, how you doing? I'm good, mate, how are you? Good day. You took a wee minute to think about that there, or have we got a satellite delay? I answered uh, instantly. You two kids to answer me, though. Right, well, this is a worry, eh? so... You just did that again. Aye, <laughs> coming live from New Zealand again. This could get awkward. <laughs> Jamie, how are you doing? I'm doing brand new, aye. Uh, I'm a wee hangover. I was at a wedding yesterday, so I feel in the effects today. I've had a hangover for fucking ages, eh? It was... Uh, was there a one to one with one of the, the boys in my team tonight? And he says, So just while we're here, can I, I check? They've just put in for the 17th of December of yet. I was like, If I know now, he's going to have it. Like, of course you can. Nobody else is taking it. And stay after a night out. I was like, Oh, fuck, I've not taken that off yet either. So that is the first thing in the morning. I go in and make sure nobody else has thought about taking the day off because I probably won't be hungover that day. Colin, are you back with us in the I'm UK? Back. Just to refresh it, mate, just to see. I, just to see if I was timing was any better. Uh, it is now. Excellent. Good. Uh, right, well, we're getting through the night, so we've got, uh, very quickly, we'll talk about the, the defeat away to Ross County on uh, last Wednesday night. Uh, the win in Perth against St. Johnson on Saturday. Uh, we've got some talking points on Twitter and some unpopular opinions, which is a new way feature that we're testing out tonight. Um, I'll probably forget about it next week, so even if it's fucking really, really good, yeah. chances are we'll never hear it again. Uh, and then we'll look ahead to uh, the visit of Rangers on Wednesday night. So um, I missed the game last week. Didn't even see it on or last Wednesday. Didn't even see it because my car broke down in Broomhouse. So if you were sitting behind me at the temporary lights when I couldn't move, I fucking apologise. I couldn't do anything about it. Um, car's still no fixed either, which is a pain in the hoop. So I'll rely on you guys. Uh, Jamie, you want to go first? What did you think on Wednesday night? Yeah, I'd, I'd only seen uh, the best parts of the second half. I'm not, I had my real laddies football training. But from what I did see... Um, it looked like we had more than enough chances to win the game. Um, a really, really poor goal to lose. I think, I, I don't know what to call Matt Macy out. It's, I can't it's his, really it's his first season, but he does have me worried with, when, with things like that. Um, although a really good shot stopper, things you didn't think he's going to save and then a couple of stupid errors. But I don't know if that's a confidence thing with the defence or whether he's expecting someone to get a touch or whatever. Just a really, really poor goal to lose. And lucky not to lose another one no long after that either. The boy uh, tried to chip the goalie, blew it over the bar. Well, you call what did you think? It? I, I saw I saw the whole game. I was the, the, the disappointment was the result. Like they actually, I thought they played okay until we lost the goal. Um, we were playing the first half, playing some nice stuff. Never had many chances. It was like a couple of weak efforts for Nisbet and Hanlon hit the post. But other than that, there wasn't really any any chances, but I thought we were a better team. Lost the goal, because Jimmy says it. I'm not sure who to blame for it, because Macy should probably save it, but there was about three defenders ran past it as well. They could have maybe knocked it away uh, before it got to, towards Macy. Um, then we lost the goal, and then they had loads of chances after. It felt like that. It felt like a few chances, because of the, um, I guess we were chucking bodies forward, and Scott Allen came on, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think we looked like scoring after they scored. So that was the disappointment. And then two stupid, well, one stupid red card. Two stupid red cards, but one in the game, yeah. one after the game, um, which is going to, well, could cost us, I guess, after. Didn't cost us on Saturday, but it could cost us later. Um, so I, it was it was disappointing. Thank you. The, disappointing the for Dodge just being back as well. It's a silly <laughs> thing kicking out. Yeah. No complaints sorry, about, Matt, sorry, no, no, I was saying no, no complaints with the red card for, for Dodge, or do you think it was harsh? It's definitely a red, I thought, I at the time. So. Yeah, no, I've never, I never really had no complaints about it at all. I mean, there was a lot of chat as well about, I like, spoke, to, spoke to a couple of folk, and then you see it on the message boards about we need consistency, because the boy went over the ball and Cadden just before half time as well. But you go, well, you know what, Portis is the only one that's been sent off once for that. 
the consistent is that you get yellow for it. So the consistency is it's yellow. That the glitch was that Port just got sent off at Ibrox, which is what we all said was wrong. If we're saying that that's wrong, we can't then start claiming that's a red card for the boy there. I don't think because you're saying well, we thought that was a yellow two weeks, three weeks, a month ago, whatever it is. But now it's now it's a red. It's not the rules haven't changed. It's just the referee got it wrong that day. That so I don't think that was a red card either because he wasn't coming in at any real pace or anything. I have a much the same opinion. I watched the highlights and I didn't think I didn't think it was bad enough for a red card. It was a shit tackle, like, but Aye. the yellow was about right. Um, and Martin Boyle, his uh, his mitigation after it was that he was complaining about his own performance. But I watched the video and there's a weird way to complain about your appointment, uh, your own Aye, performance by using your finger at a ref. <laughs> You think he'd run to Jack Ross and say that he was shite? Yeah, I'm really shit. I was really shite, or whatever, rather than <laughs> run to the ref to tell him he definitely wasn't doing that. Like that was just, uh, it was madness, absolute madness. Hanlon, I said, I think I said this. Do we say in short bangers maybe? Hanlon was trying to keep them all away, and then next thing, Boyle just came off the neighbour, pointing the finger, and and, you think, oh. and and the way that the way the ref was all day, you just knew he's wanting to sort of inadequate or you know try to prove himself or whatever he was always going red card to try and stamp his I'm, I'm in charge here getting headmaster sort of style stuff yeah yeah. The, 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 the general consensus seemed to be that the referee had a pretty shit game all in though hi you know what it was one of the shit games where you couldn't say oh he fucking hit. like Saturday oh offside goals or um Pushes in the box or anything. There was nothing. There was nothing. It was just we niggled. How's that no free kick or how's that no throw in? You know, the ones we spoke about before where you, where you get a referee in performance. And, and like I think we spoke about about the Freeland one against Falkirk years ago, where actually when I went to work on the Monday, my boss was a Falkirk fan. He went, What went against you? Like, and I'm going, Well, we should have had a throw in like going halfway. <laughs> Good thing, any fucking reason <laughs> other than he was shite, you got everything wrong. But there was no major things. Aye, it's, I always feel like referees like that never feel like they're in control of the game. Yeah. It's just that, like, fucking anything could happen. It's a total lottery. Uh, I dis- disappointed one anyway, but we then went to uh, St. Johnson. I don't think folk were expecting us to do much when uh, when we got there. I certainly looked at uh, Hibs on it and the bounce, and the consensus seemed to be that most folk expected it to, to go to a sixth uh, straight defeat. Uh, Jamie, what did you make of the, the performance overall? I was definitely in the camp. I thought we'd be lucky to get a draw. But that um, in league performances has been one of the best performances I've seen. I thought it was were excellent, a full game. Um, even with the sending off, I, I, I thought we were, uh, we were in control of the game. They scored against the running play, by far the running play. Um, and then when Bryson got sent off, and then the, more and more time sticking on, I thought, we're just never going to score. It's uh, two perfectly good goals chopped off. And just, I thought, hit the bar, hit the post. I thought, how many more chances have we got against Kenny Skonda? But it, but it come good in the end because for me, I, the, the knives were getting sharpened. As we speak, you could kind of hear the metal clawing against it, the, the cutter getting it sharpened. But I'm glad that the, the one pulled themselves out that kind of uh, rigmarole. But I thought, it was, I thought they were really good. Could have been uh, a lot more goals on Saturday for Habs. I thought they were brilliant. What you call? No, I pretty much agree with all of that. Other than I actually had this sneaky that we might get a result up there on Saturday just because um, I think everybody just assumed they would get beat because it was St Johnston and we've kind of created this uh, fear around them or hoodoo around them or you know whatever it is we've done. Um, and, and as she says, we're a better team by a mile. Even at one, we're getting beat 1 0. My wife had been out, I was sitting watching, she came in, second, started the second half, and I'm going to be a fucking much better team, but 1 0 again, you know, like that. And uh, it was like it was just it was almost a matter of time till we scored. Or actually, when Murphy missed that one, I was like, I think I think odds are that gun's never going to fucking score for us. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's like no matter what he does, something happens. He doesn't. He? Um, until until he did. But you know what I mean. Before that, yeah. I didn't. It was it was just like fuck it. Hell, no matter how good a bit of play you do, the goalie pulls to save it. You know, he's like fuck it. Hell, we're never going to score the day. Um, but I know they were excellent. Sadly, Newell was Newell had another good. He was good up first half, up at Ross County as well, and he had a good game on Saturday and all. Um, I, I thought that they were really good. It was the best they've played in weeks and weeks and weeks. I thought. I, I totally agree. They were, they were really good. Uh, Scott Allen uh, definitely made the uh, the game turn on its head. We're coming on, even though I thought we were on top anyway. It just gave you that something bit extra, and that turn and then the passes. 
magnificent. That boy still got another way. Yeah. That boy still fucking okay, heading away. It's like it's, totally done. Him. Looks like, like a curly whirly now. See if you're a St Johnston fan though, you're going fuck. See, get him if I can, because he just like he just he never, he away. never he just reacted like, after he was done. Like he just, <laughs> nah. Sorry, but he completely done him. It's, it's, it's beautiful it's to watch when you watch it back. You try to work out how he did it. It must just be like just a wee movement, eh? I mean, you dropping the shoulder or something. I mean, dropping the shoulder and then I know, the boys away. I like, they came what day it was. Um, but even then he picked out the harder pass because he could have just linked it up into the middle and hope that one of the two or three that were in the middle got it but he he, he kind of he picked it he never picked it through a crowd of players but he, they're all got to run towards the goal that gap's going to open up we'll just roll it right along the box you know what I mean it's like how many I think many it was like the pass when he played was it McGinn uh, against somebody St Mirren earlier in the season when, was it McGinn that scored that came and he, dropped, he floated it into the back post I think everybody said he'd shoot as well and yeah. he, he's like he sees things that most other players can't see Aye. It's and to, to, have the it eh? Aye. to have the confidence to do that because if somebody's at a thing, it's quite easy to clear because it's it's just a nicely weighted ball and it's sort of a, it's just magnificent. Yeah. A good way to win the game or not. Yeah. Uh, put it back with apologies for that. Uh, the, the first one that was uh, disallowed then, so Kevin is just the first half of it, no, no. And then uh, left. He was onside. Yeah. Aye, it's, again, the, the uh, sports scene that didn't have great angles, but the one that was like uh, facing the goal, you could see the de- defender, I think it was McCart, was further ahead when the ball was played. He, he, I, I didn't think he was offside. I, and I, I, even listening to the guys on Sports Sound, Christ, Alan Preston said it was onside. So, I mean, he never waxes lyrical about anything about him, but he was. Uh, he certainly was on Saturday there, so I, I, I thought I thought he was on side. And I, even the second goal, where the the push McCarts went doing like somebody shot him, so hardly even touched him. Aye, I mean he was he was a mile on. Like uh, well, I'm saying, he's a mile on. He looked comfortably on when I seen him running away, sort of putting his hands on his face, <laughs> no celebrate. I thought, fuck, sake, what's wrong with that? Goal? And I thought, is he is he doing him for a push or what's he what's he doing? Because. Um, it looked as clear a goal as, as you'll see. Um, and then I, the second one as well. I mean, it was a, it was a hat-trick he got really in effect on Saturday, or he should have had on Saturday because it was uh, fuck all wrong with that one either. No. And if that push on McCart is a free kick, then the one when they pulled Murphy is definitely a penalty. And yeah. on Wednesday night when Hanlon had his shirt over his fucking head at one point, that's a penalty, I know. So it's only defenders that seem to get the free kicks in the box rather than the other way around. It's not it's no right. Nah. Not that anybody's mentioned that on any of the sports scenes or anything like they just they've talked about this fucking red card rather than actually the goals have had disallowed the fuck all wrong with them. Uh, the ah. red card for uh, Bryson and we again we talked about the one for uh, for Deutsch. We got any complaints or, or would he think he's got any complaints about the red card? I, I, I thought both of them were bookings. None of them are straight reds, but the first one because he's he's back. I thought his he, his studs were showing in both tackles for me. Um, I, I don't think he can have any complaints. I don't even think he moaned that much when he walked off the pitch. I know he had a bit of <laughs> thingy, but uh, wasn't he? Nah. There was no real complaint for him or their players. I don't even think. I think he had another tackle earlier on before he got booked as well. So it was his third tackle. It, ah. it was reckless. Um, and I think they were both yellow cards. The first one, I think I heard. I never heard the radio, but I read somebody saying that the radio said that it was near booking because Porch has seen it coming. Like, aye, when did that Ricky become Foster did say that. Uh, that aye. Say they jumped, it was Rick, Rick, Richie Foster said he jumped at the way, so uh, so no, they get hit, so it's it can't right. be a yell. Uh, just, just stand there, let your leg get broken so we can get the boy done. It's uh, madness. It's like that's uh, never been, well, it's maybe, it maybe has been the rule at some point, maybe in the 80s or something, but it's certainly not been the rule since fucking 1995 or something. But you maybe, remember, ah, uh, you remember the rule when we were saying. Um, he's anticipated the challenge, so he's moved it the way it's still a book in. Remember, uh, Eddie McGeady used to get that all the time. I just anticipated it. I, I, like, well, say, to be honest, I think they probably said that about Porteous's red card at Ibrox just a few weeks ago. That uh, it doesn't matter, he barely touched them. It's the it's the force and the and then ten or whatever. That was what the shite they were saying a month ago. But they've, they've flipped on his head this time, and I'm going, what are you talking about? Like, it's clearly, clearly, I mean, even the one before it, Poch just skipped to a tackle before that could have been a free kick, maybe a booking. Then that one was, like, even worse for a booking. It's still a booking, but 
like a, on the on the yellow rate, and it was a dark yellow rather than a, a light yellow. You know what I mean? It's and then and then the one even Bartley was saying it on Sports Scene on Saturday night. He said that he didn't think the second one was a yellow because yeah. he got the ball before he then crashed yeah, into Newell or was it Newell attack? I think it was. Um, it was, it was Newell. Huh? I don't think it matters if you get the ball if you then clatter the boy either because you're not really allowed to go in with your studs into a boy's leg. I don't think. Nice. I don't think so. Anyway, I feel, I'm, I'm sure we were on the end of these bookings and red cards. So, but I, it was. Uh, I thought it was a red card to sum it up. To be succinct. <laughs> 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 Aye, I, I like you said, uh, Jamie, I think the McCarthy, uh, McCarthy, uh, Bryce himself didn't have any real complaints about it other than the weekend of uh, fuck off, get away with the hand as he's going away. But I think he was made annoyed with himself. Um, Callum Davidson seemed to think uh, the game was pretty even. Did you see his interview after the, the game? I did, I. He, he, I, I couldn't really. He, he was he was rich, and he kind of just his wee humpy back at it. He was. <laughs> I thought his head was going to pop off his shoulders. I just he was just ratting the height. He just I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? But uh, I said, because I, 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 as I say, Hibs were excellent in the full game. But I, I didn't even think it was, as I say, if, even with, without the sending off, I still think we would have won. We were playing that well. And if I had, had the, the first goal um, allowed, then it's a completely different game than anyway. Thanks. So Thanks, I've said, but Carl Davis obviously has got knee neck. See, if you had knee neck, would you wear a Harry Hill style collar like he does? <laughs> it's just a normal size collar, though, it, 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 it because he's knee neck. <laughs> it makes it look like Harry Hill. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I just thought it was like a weird take. It was like, uh, like I said to you, Colin, on the, on the WhatsApp, I think somebody needs to give him a wee booster seat or something so he sees the game properly. Again, for the next next time, if maybe just don't get the best vantage point for that role, dude. That was a mental interview, absolutely mental. Not mad. I think uh, St. Johnson, despite the fact they went in one nothing up at half time, they still hadn't had a shot on target. I think it was well into the in fact, probably after we'd scored the winner before they had a shot on target. And I'm not even sure they actually managed one. I think they did. I think they did. I think they may see having a save. It was another poor goal to lose, wasn't it? Though I mean, I know just to bring it bring it back down the tone a bit because it was um, it was just another cross ball into the box. And what, what I don't understand, and this is a question because I, I don't know, right? We spoke about zonal v man to man and all that. I didn't understand like what one we're doing. Right? Don't so I, I don't know, but I'm assuming it's zonal because Porteous isn't marking anybody. Like, but but Cadden and somebody else are, and you. Think, why is Port just no marking one of the guys as one of your best attacking headers, headers of the ball? Why is he standing on the six yard line trying to clear it? And then no listening to Nisbet or Nisbet no shouting to clear it. And then obviously, you know what I mean? It, it's like get, get the best the, get the best headers in a place to header the ball and marking somebody. I think that's uh, Cadden in that, so, didn't he jump? Okay, there was no yeah. challenge to the header. We we're just basically stood watching them and I was like, aye. that's kind of right. I think St. John's did it on purpose, so I think they put. This is almost like uh, oh, fuck it. This will sound stupid when I try to describe it, but like reverse marking. So when they're going into the box, their strikers will target mm-hmm. two two players that are on the coaches or handling. Do you know, uh, like uh, if you go back to the cup final with the the score with Rooney coming back, because he's on Doug uh, uh, Doogie tripod because yeah. he's no like a strong header of the ball. But that's how they how they scored, and I think they they target the back post. Knowing that Hamlin and Porteous will be central, and so whoever's at that area is going to be weaker. I think it's a, a deliberate tactic. I, I think rather, so Hibs need to be better at it. But I don't think going to say the uh, zonal marking or, or man marking it doesn't matter if you didn't do it well. It doesn't matter which one you do. Yeah. yeah, but in the cup final it was open play, but in this one it's a corner. Yeah. So we must know that they stuck in. It was Gordon, wasn't it? The header that one of the centre halves just came up. I Liam Gordon. I wasn't it get marked by. I was getting marked by a fullback, so like, so I maybe they've picked that, but we we've got time to go. Wait a minute, who's fucking marking that? Get you get in there, and I'll go over there. But it, it's not like open play where you've not got that that luxury, like in the cup final when tripod. Gets yeah, yeah out. that's a fair point. Yeah, it's um, called on tripod. I've never done that before. That was your fault. I determined I wasn't going to call him that. But now you have. <laughs> good, 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 good. Um, deserved win away. There was a, a wee thread on Hibster asking, sort of comparing that that result to 
um, Ferguson winning the, the cup game, do you know that kind of saved his job? Uh, infamously, whether it did or no is, is a, a matter of debate, but it was uh, like a kind of turning point from. Do you see any merit in that argument, or do you think that's some of the pish? I think it's some of the pish because I think they're still like. It's just a it's just a respite. If, if we lose again on Wednesday, they'll they'll be back out. There's a handful of them on Hibs.net that are just relentless on posts about Jack Ross, or or, or even about on any posts. They'll turn any Jack Ross post. So I think if we beat Rangers, then it'll be like fuck. That's another big game. They'll be like fuck me. That's another big game. He's won now. You know what I mean? And, and it'll so he needs to go on a run and maybe even win the cup. And then, then it'll be like, oh, I never won the derby. You know what I mean? It's it's just, I, 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 I can't see how he gets, all he can do is reduce that number. Anybody that was in the maybe camp will, will start going back the other way rather than heading towards the Jack Ross out camp because I I think, as Jamie was saying at the start in his first bit, if we'd lost six in a row, like the, the knives were coming out, like they, would, they wouldn't have wanted them in charge for Wednesday, never mind getting to the end of the year. This seems to happen with every manager, you know, like a, a couple of games and then it's, the knives are out and it's usually the same people and then it's kind of, this is shite and he's not playing the Hibs way. See that nonsense, the Hibs way, that annoys the fucking shit out of me. How many shite managers have we had and at this game, no play free football, no had the players, it's just a, a myth. But I, I think Jack Ross has, he has us playing some good football, but it's not recognised because it's, mm. folk can only, they're, they're blinkered to the the situation and some some guys will actually be wanting Hibs to get beat Can I just I can't I get my head around it it's just a, for me I'm not saying that Jack Ross is the be all and end all but he's got to every semi-final that he's, that's been asked of him he's worked through the toughest time ever we've had to work through football and they had the smallest squad he's, we're now in our second final you know, I'm like what fucking where do you want Ken give the guy a break I think it was. Uh, I think it was very apparent that the players were playing for him on Saturday. Fact, probably the last last three games, you know, from from winning the cup game, and although we didn't win it against Ross County, the performance was there for for most of the match. Uh, and then on on Saturday, it definitely looked like a squad that was right behind them, and no one that was. Uh, kind of, you see it when the players uh, when players stop kind of getting everything for the manager. You, you can tell. I don't think that was the case at all. I no, don't I think it's it is it's, uh, no, it's good to see Porteous mentioned it in his interview last week, like we said. But I think it's it is mad, like the the not playing good football stuff. I mean, we do maybe just know for ninety full minutes, like. But you seen even the Murphy chance I've already mentioned that was a quality bit of football. So they, they do do it, like, and I know that's just a one off example, but th- there's other examples. Neil sprays some nice passes about they do, and, and maybe then he always end in a goal, or but then he wins 6 2, or whatever it is that, that that gets cast up for. But we do play some good stuff in in spells, not not like, not, but then you know what? Is it Mowbray's team that gets cast up for it in our era, really? And he used to get yeah. pumped down again and that as well. Aye. Like, and they never won anything. They got popped out the cup semi finals and lost derbies at Ten Castle really badly regularly. Like uh, four nils and four ones regular against Hearts when he was in charge. So I guess a bit glossed over like how good it was because we would maybe win a good comfortable six six nil or four nil away four one away to Dundee United. I remember going to that up at Boxing Day and seven nil at home to Livingston and that. And they're the games you remember. But there's a lot of there's a lot of shit in there that gets so maybe maybe in ten twenty years time we'll be going fucking brilliant when Jack Ross was here he used to win every week. So definitely they've still uh, got one of the best win percentages uh, kind of modern era Hibs managers as well. Uh, right, we'll get some talking points. Oh, actually, before we do that, the quality of the two goals uh, are, are they as good as goals as we scored last season? Uh, I I think so. That uh, especially the, the the second goal. Um, it was a delight but the finish you know, for the first one was, was superb because you still got to have that confidence because he, he, he doesn't like to batter the ball just like he always likes to guide it which can be frustrating but that's right in the corner keepers no chance yeah. um, did you notice Xander Clark jumping on the ball after I was just going to say that special mention is Xander Clark I, yeah. <laughs> we still had to play seven minutes of injury time but it would be brilliant if a referee just went nah fuck it we're not playing it because you've only got seven minutes because you guns were wasting it and uh, <laughs> down the slope said that on uh, on bang on, on Saturday. I fucking totally agree. As soon as the board went up, I was like, I fucking wish you could do that. 
Uh, but she could just take the, the time off was, and go, nah, he's with that. Mind the boy, mind the boy got the cut eye. Um, aye. The other centre half. And and they're treating it, they're getting the big Terry Butcher bandage on and all that, and you're going, just stand at the side of the pitch and fucking put uh, it on, rather than, like, what, what is that all about? Like, clock's uh, ticking uh, on and you're going, get that gun off. No, but... Josh Campbell was quite lucky with that, to be honest with you. It was an elbow. Thank you. Mm. I, think, he's, he's, I, I didn't even think he's meant it, but because he, he, he's, his arm was in an unnatural position, it's basically blocked him. Uh, could have got done. But, uh, yeah. I, uh, but it, it looked a slow one. To, to be honest, his eye was like him. Lucky uh, it was McCart. He would have still been lying there. Eh? He would have still been <laughs> Well, as, uh, I mean, McCart, McCart, he crumpled like a cheap suit, didn't he? Came and Poaches uh, went up for the, the, the challenge. Home. There was nothing... Uh, touched his back. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, and then... The thing that got me is the ref. This is why we were talking about with Hamlin against Rangers, and I said, see, we're a bit of savvy. So if, if Sir Johnson had been playing Rangers, Rangers would never have scored that goal because yeah. McCart would have stayed down with the heat knock and the referee would have stopped the play. It's just yeah. that, that wee bit. I didn't really like it as a as a football fan. You'd rather not see players doing it. But if that's like what the general sort of rule of thumb is that, that you did, well, you kind of think, yeah. just, just sometimes be a wee bit fucking clever with it. Uh, right, talking points. I'll go to that so we'll, we'll push on for uh, for time. Uh, run through some Twitter talking points and then we'll get the, the unpopular health opinions. I'm just going to shut that door because that dog is dead, Mark. Bloody heathen. <laughs> There's nothing even wrong with me. It's just, it's just being a dick. <laughs> It'll probably still bark, but the door's shut, so there's, uh, there's a, a barrier for the You record this to the dog house. Eh? The dog house eh? I'm in the thing. kennel. Hi. <laughs> Freezing. So, right. <laughs> Stuart said they uh, thought it was a great performance today uh, though we started to worry as time was dragging on before we equalised even better was over the Queens for the crossing by half five uh, Jack Callard said is there anyone more rattled by that Hibs win than the Loudon Tavern did you see, uh, the did you see the post aye no. uh, when we were getting beat one no, honestly it's like we are living rent free in their head rent free they tweeted calling uh, is, is Ryan happy <laughs> Aye. He was as well. Aye, he was. He was buzzing. <laughs> Absolutely <Aye>. buzzing. <laughs> uh, uh, imagine doing that, Ellie. That's. Oh, aye. They're a weird bunch, eh? Oh. Uh, Paul, Paul Mackay, can we now stop talking about a St. Johnson hoodoo? Mm. Yeah. Aye. We we've got a good that. record at McDermott Park, yeah. I think we've got. It was last season, they lost three, four in a row, four, one nil. That, that was that was where the hoodoo came from, was it? Oh, well, we drew a few games with them at Easter Road over the years as well, haven't we? That's the. It's been a lot of last minute goals and stuff, I guess. But aye, there's no, there's no hoodoo. They're, they're actually quite shite. And remember, we were. Mind there was folk talking about Callum Davidson as like fucking next Pep Guardiola. You can't just as everybody standing on the fucking goal line. It's fucking shit. Absolute shit. And he's been. Yeah, it's him done now. Like he should have jumped when he had the chance because they're just dropping like a stone. Yeah, Aye. losing I losing the, the players is a big deal for the Malin McCann uh, and uh, Jason Kerr are massive losses to to a team. They're, uh, they're a grim watch as well, though. Eh? Like, you know, the the, the, the fat boys just horrendous. And they've got a couple of good players in there. Brotherspoon always liked Brotherspoon. I think it was a, a good player. But wasted in that team, absolutely yeah. wasted. Um, LG and Cow said, What's a clean sheet? So, when was our last clean sheet? Can you remember? Oh, well, we've not played for so since the break. We've not had since the break for COVID, we've never had one. Oh, we got beat games before that, so we've never been clean sheets. Either, I? Oh, no, okay. can't remember. Okay, remember. Yeah, right. Uh, well, we didn't care. There's the answer. Uh, Dave, Ross Graham, Gowdy, yeah, first game of the season was the last one I, I can remember, but there might have been others. I'll have a think. I'm not remembering. I'm not very good at remembering that most stats. Uh, we, we drew against Hearts. That was no, no. Oh, I know, no. Uh, Maybe Ten Castle might be the last one. Uh, Fuck you know. Um, which was a good, good job we did that because they've again they're one in the league. If you believe them, uh, uh, Dave Graham can be more like St Johnson. Uh, Jack Callard. Will someone ever address the Scott Allen situation? Every time I've seen him play this season, he's played a big part in anything positive we do. Either he's in or he's out. Clarity is welcome. Um, where do you stand on Scott Allen? In? I love Scott Allen. I, I fucking love him. But he, he, he drops in and out of he matches. Like, he's come on there. He was excellent. He was brown against Dundee United in the cup. 
and then he in, in the games since the Dundee United game, he's huffed and puffed. Um, but there's definitely a talent there, and I would give him a new deal. Um, but I, unfortunately, I think Jack Ross is, is not going to go down that route. I think he'll be away in the summer. You call him. I mean, when he plays like he did on Saturday, he, he's just brilliant to watch. The thing is that Wednesday night he came on the pitch. Like I don't know if the guy takes that in after Saturday or Wednesday, and he nearly gave a goal away. He fell over the fell over That's the right. ball, and the boy was through one on one. It was one of the chances Jimmy mentioned. So it's like the the young and the young there. Eh? It's like when he's good, he's he's brilliant. That's the thing. Um, so I he's he's a great player to have on the bench. For a I also. We um, being ill, uh, obviously it was well rumoured because it's never really been documented. Nobody's actually come out and said what was wrong with him. Um, and if a good pre-season can get him up to mere match fitness, he might just be a better player next year. But again, it's all if sports and maybe eh? so. I'd love to see him say, as I say, it just gives you something different that no one else in the team can give you. Mel Clement said uh, the ref given St Johnson too much protection in their own box could think of two or three chances or chalked off goals that looked like minimal fouls, if at all. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, th- there was one, I think I'm what the referee gave. He sort of signalled like it might have been an offside, but it couldn't have, you know, like the ball came across, it got knocked in. I think there was two players at the back post that kept it in, but the referee blew it, and I couldn't tell if it blew for a foul. Mm. Uh, maybe the ball had gone out behind the goal and came back in or something like that but you're watching going, Aye, I remember that. For, for a foul there there, there seemed to be none couldn't have they could have been offside yeah. Aye, weird one uh, Sozy47062 said the manager made the correct subs yeah. agree with that? Yeah, definitely agree with that I um, as, as I say it, what he was doing was, was working it's, we just couldn't put the ball in the net and let the, the referee allow it but definitely the changes help Murphy and Scott Allen were, were good when they come on. Uh, Pat has practiced said, have we ever looked like deserving winners and nearly not winning any more than today's performance? Subs were excellent. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can think of things where we've looked like mere deserving winners and, and no won a game. Do you know, How many t- uh, but it doesn't often happen that we end up then we do win. So it's quite good that that happened. Hmm. How many good. times have you played hearts and battered them for the full game and never got in the hand out of the game. Right. Countless times against them. You lose 0-0 yeah. against them. Or... That's it. Right. Uh, Stuart said, Kevin Nisbet's best game for a long time. I had a good game. He did. He played, was he played against Rangers a couple of, the, the week before it as well in the, in the semi-final. But he, he was, I mean, well, he took he took all his goals really well. <laughs> even even the two he didn't get allowed to, to keep. Because the first one, it was a great finish. He's, Three one on one with a goalie like that, just wait till he went down. So I he played really well. It's not just that though, because he does look a good. He's got he's got a good touch in that. It's just he, he's looked lazy at times, and that's what's annoyed a lot of people. I he also he touched, because sorry, Matt, I'll let you go, mate. I says we touched for Murphy with first class. Uh, you know the one that, uh, he just kind of clicked right outside his his foot just to, to yeah, cushion aye. it. Unbelievable. Right, but I think with, with the Ross County game, they are. Um, they were one of my pals was certainly more on about it saying that um, he just doesn't need to put his foot through the ball always try to guide it in and what have you I was watching a thing with Michael Owen Michael Owen was basically uh, saying just get the just get on target just get on target he didn't have to smash it it doesn't have to be this more often more often than not it'll go in and I just think that's the, maybe the mentality him but everybody up here Scotland's wanting to put a hot shot hate machine blow the big people through the net <laughs> I mean, Ian Wright used to talk about that, getting it in the corners and that. I mind watching him goals on Sunday. He was on with the four, I think, years ago. And he was like talking about just, I oh, was just putting, just get it in the corner, doesn't it? Didn't he be fast? Just get in the corner on target. I mean, but uh, he's, uh, he, this bit's a good player. He just, he's, he's just, I think he's been a bit unfairly criticised. There's a bit of fair criticism in there as well, like, because he, he can look a bit petulant and at times doesn't help him. He could maybe look less petulant. You could, he can stop doing that. Um, yeah. It's well interesting running. that he, he looked better. So the team played well, and he looked better than a good team. But you don't know if he's lifted the team's performance because he's been good. Do you know? Yeah. I think if that if that point makes sense. But if the folk around them are playing well, it's easier for him to shine. Yeah. Or him playing well has lifted the game and those around the bit of because one one of the yeah, two a bit of both, or a bit yeah. of both. Aye. Yeah. 
Uh, Neil Renton oh. said I wasn't there. I didn't watch it, so I'm claiming the win was down to me. We have to give Neil the credit for that. Aye, aye. Well done, Neil. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ian McPhail, uh, he's referring to... Oh, oh, oh. There was actually there was a, isn't there a talking point that came out of bookmark list. There's a boy Jimmy who does a list of uh, this weekend's fans league of vermin, and uh, Hibs featured this week for the. Uh, we were number two, and it says Hibs. Would you attend a funeral to boo the deceased? No, of course not. Hibs fans essentially did just that today when they jeered a Saints player who was heavily bleeding. <laughs> oh, fuck off! <laughs> yeah. The one with the weak eye. I'm sure that the telly gone, just got a bit of fucking Vaseline on it until I got to carry on. Because if they're <laughs> not going to do the head, if they're not going to treat head injury seriously by taking them off and actually checking them, but fucking Vaseline, then carry on. Yeah, can it? There, um, there's no middle ground here. You either did it properly, you did it at all. I'm reliably informed that the boy who uh, who posted that just does these as a wee wind up, a wee, a wee fishing exercise. So fair play to him. Uh, Governor twenty four did a nice combo of strip. So we went Cracker. for the we went for the green shorts for the yellow top. Uh, what do we think of that? I liked it. I, I didn't like the yellow strip, but I, I didn't think like I liked the yellow, the yellow one. But I liked it with the green shorts. I didn't. I didn't like it when it was all yellow because was it Ibrox who played all yellow? Yeah, in the season. Uh, and I, I just didn't like it, but I liked it with the green. I thought it was smart. Aye, I'm, it's quite, I'm it's not a fan of yellow or strip. purple strips. No, at all. No, no. Nah, just I've never liked them. The purple one seems to be a bit of a favourite folk. I just can't stand it. The There's some good purple ones. Mind they brought a sort of lilac one. It was like thistle ah, or something. They branded yeah. it. That was pretty rank. I can't anybody who's got that strip. I didn't even think we got one. Normally we get them off at the kids, eh? but I didn't even think we got, got that one. Uh, but I, I like the fact that they can, they can chop and change. So they, they did all white at the start of the season. Eh? Motherwell, that looks smart as anything. And then there's the white yeah. with the green. Now the yellow and the green. Uh, KBS said Josh Boy Campbell does he feature for us now for a while or is he only in here for the short term i.e. until McGuinness is back yes, uh, where do you fit him into the team here? I think he's done well since he's come in um, but obviously if McGuinness is fit McGuinness is in the team mm. yeah, simple as that really. I think we answered similar. there was a similar point last week not the exact same one but um, I think McGuinness will be back in the team when he's fit like um, Campbell's it looks promising enough. I can't. I, I, I said I have said watching the last couple of games. I quite like him. Like he's neat and tidy, but actually I can't really remember him doing like anything spectacular. But yeah. he does. He, he does a lot of chasing and harrying, and he's quite neat and tidy with the ball. It's not like he's uh, he's not scoring rakers of goals or or any goals or anything like that. So. He's not done anything wrong either. I think no. he's, he's he's no stood out to be in, doing something daft. So I think. And your players like that, and they go about their business and something thingy because he'd stand out like a sore thumb if he wasn't doing his job. But um, as I say, when you've got like a full complement here in midfield, Newell, uh, Barrels, um, and uh, McGuinness and what have you, it's just diff- going to be difficult for anybody to get in there. Uh, Fat as Pickett said, uh, can't, I don't Barrels, uh, Dave, Dave will be delighted if that is stuck. Uh, can a man with, uh, have no neck and a brass neck at the same time? <laughs> Ask Callum Davidson. Hi, I think little Callum Davidson's proved it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, the irony of this uh, Twitter user handle is no loss to me. The best wee dog ever uh, says, due to the indignity of Christmas shopping with my boss, I only seen the second half. The result was never in doubt, I thought, but we left it late. Yeah, uh, who goes Christmas shopping? Oh, I think it is, but he's talking about my boss, he's been in his message, like, no, going out with a. Imagine we had we had the Christmas shop, eh? <laughs> That'd be weird. Eh? Here. I find we here, but I still, I still do a work today. <laughs> 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 uh, Matt said, uh, "I should add to this during the county match and before uh, Alan came on today, Hibbs looks the lump crosses in for the flanks. After the sub today, the play was much more central and light on quick one or two touch passing and movement, which seemed to suit Nisbet well. Fair point." I see that with, with the, I mean, I, I'm sure we've mentioned loads of times on this podcast about uh, no really understanding the tactics, but with Boyle being missing for that game and, and Nisbet becoming more alive, is that because he's getting more of the ball? Is the tactics changed there? Or kind of something 
different went on that you, you're not seeing. That was just from your mention. I was thinking, oh, I wonder if that's maybe why he's been so prominent, just seeing Mary the ball. It'd be just a different dynamic in the team, isn't it? Aye. Uh, Flash Goxie, uh, who uh, was also on Keepbangers last night, by the way, excellent contribution to it too. Uh, he said, the standard Scottish referee in, in general taking today's game into account. Consistently shite. Now, isn't it? Aye. It, it is consistent. really shite. That... Oh, we asked for consistency, though. So Aye. we're getting it. It'd be good if it was consistently good, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Ah, we're stretching it. That's a stretch objective. That one. That's. Aye. <laughs> let's just get consistency <laughs> let's first. Get consistency first. <laughs> uh, Jeff terrible. Ashton said Scott A's class is not in doubt, but to uh, me, he's carrying a few extra pounds. Might be to do with his heart condition, so maybe his impact sub is the best we can hope for. When he started, he's not been as effective to me. By the way, I love him. Uh, I didn't notice it. I always thought Scott Allen's never looked dead skinny like the whole time that he's. Played for Hibs, even in the first spell, he didn't look. Can some players look like you see Martin Boyle? Is yeah. no, no, I know him. Scott Allen's never been like that, but I think he looked particularly heavy. On I don't know that I want to talk anyway, do you know. It's not, it's not an area I like to, to discuss, but <laughs> it's, it's maybe around his face, he's just carrying about around his face, and I think that gives the impression of maybe that, that he is. But he's also got a, a kind of John McGinn-esque sort of style. Derrier, he uses that to, to shuffle his way about and hold players off. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not as good, as magnificent as John's, but yeah, I think that maybe adds to the kind of, that kind of thing, you know, that he's not as mobile, but he is. All right, well, that's the talking points for, for folks. Thanks for sending those in. Uh, unpopular opinions next. Uh, so we should stress these are not our opinions. These are, these are ones that people have deemed unpopular opinions when they've sent them in. First one's for Fattest Prickis. Uh, it says, unpopular opinion. Louis Stevenson and Paul Hanlon are far better footballers than some people would dare to admit. And most of those who don't really rate them wouldn't last a full 90 minutes against either of them. Well, what do you that's think? True. That's true. Because anybody that's playing that level of football, especially for a thousand games between them, would wipe the floor. I mean, you, we've, we've probably played five. I've certainly played fives against boys that have played at junior level, yeah. and they're fucking streets ahead of you. Never mind somebody that's playing yeah. in the Premier League for a thousand or five hundred games each. They, they must be, you know. So my, my one of my mates went to school with Scott Wilson, mine Scott Wilson, that played for yeah. Rangers and Dunfermline. Scott, yeah, aye, he, he he's a good player. My mate went to school and says he was fucking brilliant at school. And then, but he was he's a Hearts he's a Hearts fan. He'd see him play it. Everybody shouting, I'm calling him a donkey and shite and all that. And he's like. Fucking so much better than everybody else anywhere near near this pitch, oh, yeah. and it's just true. They've just got more time, more space. They just see everything before you. There's no. He used to there. play. He Scott used to play uh, BB football. It was a big thing when I was a kid, and he was played for the 19th, I think it was. He was a cracking standout player. Right. Scotia they used to call him. Sure. I was thinking it's uh, folk underestimate how difficult it is to stay at a club at Hibs level for any length of time. When you look at the players who. Have they stayed, Joe? And it's no, it's no. Everybody's going on to bigger and better things than than Hibs, Joe. Like the, okay, some of them have, but but to just get contracts that consistently to play at that level is you difficult. Want, like, see, for a club to move on, right? For, for a club to progress and move on, you need guys that are just solid club men, like they two are. They've got their international caps, one each or whatever they've got, right? But they're just solid club players that. When new boys come in, they can tell them what it's all about and all that kind of stuff. That if you've got a revolving door like we had for a while, which they were included yeah. in, but again, like Stevenson was out the team, in the team. Whereas now he's like, everybody knows he comes in, he's he's all old, older head. He's, he's still fucking got 10, 15 years on me, I think, but he's one of the older heads in the dressing room. He could tell them what it's all about, show them the ropes, you know, all that kind of stuff, mentor boys, keep them right. That's really important in a club. I think it gets kind of forgotten about when they talk about the blendy youth and older older heads and all that. You kind of just bring an older head in that isn't he sort of ingrained in the club as much as them. And it wouldn't have as That's much a very good fit. Yeah, I think you're spot on there. Uh, it's, see, just before we leave that, um, yeah. Paul Hanlon was going to go to Aberdeen and his missus didn't want to go. This is a fact, by the way. I was wondering if it was uh, if he did go, how much people would have then said. I oh, fuck. I wish we had them wondered about him. You know, I mean, it's. I was thinking that because, um, but I'm pretty sure if we went to Aberdeen, we would have definitely been uh, playing well up there or not. It's going to be a different outlook on how things are. 
when players are already at the club and some people want them out and then you get the go elsewhere and they're excellent. I think it was John that said it last week. Familiarity breeds contempt. I can't remember if this yeah. is who he was talking about or not, but uh, it might have been Hanlon he was talking about after the Rangers game last week where he was excellent. So, um, Leon said it. Was it Aye. Leon? So it was. Aye. Right. He was quite proud of himself for it. Aye, I wasn't giving him right. a credit. I thought it was, I thought well, it was John. Are you sure you're not giving him a credit for the credit? Sure it was the John. T.G. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Willis said, folk that talk about the Hyvies family, including the club family, in the commas, uh, you can choose your friends, etc. Uh, does the, the phrase Hyvies family annoy you? Just a bit cringy. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing uh, them, like the, the, the Celtic family and all that, you know, all that kind of stuff that... I just, I just, I'd never use it. Never use the phrase myself for that reason. That I think it, if well, you were to say that up. out loud, it sound you'd be like, oh, you'd feel sick <laughs> after you say that. It comes <laughs> up when they try to sell you something. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You can't wish for the next. It's, it's always at a piece of market. Hashtag oh, we are one and all that. Aye, aye. We're, we're, we're the Hybies family today, right? Uh, 150k in Hamlin Hill. Uh, his unpopular opinion is Hibs are a bang average club, results wise. That sets out to play football the proper way. As such, the fans will enjoy great stroke shite times throughout the time they follow them. Hibs should be sported with equal measure through both good and shite times. Moan the fucking Hibies. Bang, bang average club based on results over the history of the, the club. Any arguments? <laughs> <laughs> I think the stats bear it, don't they? I think, I think it's, 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 it is unpopular to say it out loud, but I think it is about fifth or sixth on average. Big position, isn't it, overall? Forever? Yeah, I so. It's, it, the, 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 it's the illusions of grandeur on always some folks like it just can't understand it but as I said earlier on I, th- I think this Hibs way of playing football is a myth it's an absolute myth Hibs family need to stick together and just support them through through thick <laughs> <laughs> 100% <laughs> uh, I'd love like it to change it it's difficult because you, you go to the league with Rangers and Celtic and that kind of fucks over you're never going to be yeah. Without something significant happening, just like a seismic event, if it is what it is, eh? like the best it could be is third, which is fucking depressing. And, and even then, we're not very good at getting third because it's like, and when we do do it, it's not fucking good enough for folk. No, that's right. Well, uh, Kunster uh, said, Should we start chucking people in hospitality, paddy green seats all over the place at home games to liven the place up a bit? I mind, mind the game in the championship. It was a Saturday tea time game. Was it Dunfermline, maybe? Dunfermline rings a bell. Marciano made some brilliant saves in that early. Where's Dunfermline? I, I, Scotland had played rugby in the afternoon. We played, I think we must have been live in Alba or something at night. And there was like a, a 40th or a 50th birthday over in the West Stand. And they were singing at the Mickey Weir song. They were doing all it. They'd done the whole thing. Oh, the old They were just the next us. And, Aye. I, that wee bit, I was over in the East that season. That, that that wee bit in the West, the whole you thought, can it, the atmosphere doesn't it just need to come for the famous five lower or the, the singing section or the East section forty three whatever because fifty boys on a boy on a boys forty or fifty I just fucking made the place made the atmosphere for the whole place. So you I don't some, idea. Some David Hibbs does Aye, aye. There you go. <laughs> um, Dav says we shouldn't be starting Alan on Wednesday. No, I don't think we should. Eh? No, I'm the same. Uh, Liam O'Neill, the same team. I uh, probably yeah. Uh, yeah. Liam O'Neill, when we went two one up against St Johnson, we struggled to get hold of the ball for the last ten minutes because Alan and Murphy defend like traffic cones. Newell was as slow as a week in the jail, and we'd be punished for it if we tried to do that for ninety minutes. Well, we'd I, I didn't, I didn't understand it. They were just so trying to hold on to it, but they did. I mean, I. As Colin was saying earlier on, I didn't even think we had another chance. I think there was one that was kind of, it went well wide, but it, it, it could have been a kind of chance, but I, I can't actually I think remember. They, I think they got across, across the box, and McGinn or somebody picked it up at the back post, and, you know, that was a, and there was Nathan Jones to play near it, and that was as much as I remember. He came down the right, crossed it towards the left. That was it, but I, I mean, it wasn't a... It's funny though, once you go to one, like, once we went 2-1 up, we probably did take the foot off the gas a bit to make sure we didn't lose a goal. Whereas actually the, the best option might have been to just go and get a third, like nearly purchased, which I didn't we mentioned. The purchase nearly did. Ah. But that, that was a brilliant run through the middle. Like I wish he'd scored that, but he should have scored that. And then Nisbet should have probably scored the rebound as well. But uh, but aye, the the probably aye, is that take the foot off the gas thing to protect it rather than 
uh, gung ho. It's one of these. I can't remember. It's if you can see the goal when you try to defend it, you get slaughtered from trying to defend it. Aye. Oh no, but I get why you do it. If if you get caught out, you know, if you stay gung ho, still chasing it, and you get caught up because uh, everybody's up the park, you get fucking slaughtered for that as well. Eh? There's, I suppose there, there must be a balance somewhere with it, but yeah. you're probably better protected what you've got. I'd rather, as a football fan, you'd rather see it go for a third dead school. I know, but it's subconscious. It I'm not even saying it's tactical. It's the players will be thinking, right, fucking, I'm not going to bomb on there because I'm not going to be the one that gets caught leaving, leaving a gap. So it's, it's probably not even a thing coming for the bench before folk try and claim it as a Jack Ross negativity. It's, it's players being, like, sensible. And his uh, coach is sprinting further than anybody else <laughs> to get on that ball. But you know what? He was the only one, though, because the other I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like Nisbet ran forward and he obviously it was just like fucking acres of grass in front of him and he thought, if I run, I'm going to get her. It was amazing. <laughs> He's probably realised the, the, the time's up. It's like, oh, no matter okay, if I score or didn't score, they're not getting time yeah. to get back up the park to, to do anything. Uh, St. Christopher said, uh, Jack Ross is the best manager we have had since Eddie Turnbull. To back this up, he has had the highest win percentage since 1971 in the top league. Uh, Jack's percentage is currently higher than Turnbull's, but his was more sustained and they won a cup. Hashtag Ross out. <laughs> Aye. Is that is that right? Or are they like the ones you published that time? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, so, uh... we, I, inadvertently, it was accidental. I, 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 I should probably say, there's a there's a website for the hip stats. Right? So I, I was coming home from work, right? it was one Tuesday. Uh, I was on Google because I was fucking annoyed. I can't remember what it was. We'd, we'd be beat at the weekend. And there was a lot of folks slaughtering Jack Ross. And I was like, I wonder how his record stacks up. Because it was his home home record was getting slaughtered. And so there's this website that's got, it's like hip stats or something like that. I can't remember. But you can filter it to all competitions, to home games, league games, you know, whatever. So I'd put overall record up. And it came up, I was like, oh, looks no bad, Jack Ross sitting fourth, I think he was, all-time Hibs managers, which is pretty good going. Then I changed the filter to home games, hit the wee button, the screen refreshed, it came up, I was like, fucking, I was fourth best for home games as well. And then I went, just run with that, I shared that shared it, says, fucking, everybody's moaning about it, but it's fourth best, and I had this big fucking, that kid stood by it, and it was, the next day I was looking at it going, oh, somebody, somebody says, I'm not sure that's right. And then I went and I quoted the, the source stuff and they never came back after that. So that's when I got it. And it was posted in good faith, but then I went and looked into it. I was like, man, that's just never refreshed. It's looked like it's refreshed, but it's no changed it. So the stat was complete bullshit, eh? Like it was it's it was unintentionally wrong. Um, but it just left it out long enough. I was like, well, fuck, I'm not going to go back to change it now. <laughs> I didn't realise it. I didn't realise it. No, just, like, no, 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 no. Um, no. Aye, but at that point, that's a right. We're going to assume they are. In this case, just for yeah. this this point, I, um, I, I didn't know fourth best. I mean, he's not won a cup, though. That's what's holding him back, and it's because we, we never won a cup against the who, who, who's the three above him. Very interest Turnbull. Well, who is it? Uh, I can't remind. Uh, uh, Steen Turnbull, Steen, Steen. And I can't remind who the Steen was hardly here as well. Eh? I mean, they did a season or something. I've even done a whole season. So I, I mean, it's it's it's, it's cracking stats he's, he's building up, but there's a lot. Of, it's, you wonder, eh? What is it like? Folk were that gutted about no winning either of the cups last year. I mean, well, I was gutted after the Scottish Cup, like. But I mean, the it, it seems a strange like we're winning a lot. The the, the derby, the pre-lockdown derby, was a serious because yeah. Hearts were fucking shy. That should have been one that we went and absolutely aye. just done a number on them. Really, and we got turned over. Aye. But that's it. it should have been like a great night for everybody, really. Yeah. And then we did they and then we lost to them in the at Hamden. Mm-hmm. And again, those were, were, were ones that I think folk had built. I'd kind of I'd built up. I was like, fuck it, we're definitely gonna be them. We're miles better than them. And we were. Aye. We were miles better than them. And just somehow didn't they win the fucking game. I think that he scores that penalty. Was, aye. The thing is if if it, if they'd done that and then we'd got beat by Celtic in the final. Folk wouldn't have bothered, eh? They'd go, oh, well, we'll go to the final Celtic, you're not expected to beat them. But we beat Hearts and we kind of broke that, never beat them at Hamden, even though it's only been like fucking three or four times. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it just it changes all that narrative, doesn't it? Uh, oh, fucking Doug, honestly. Does anybody want to buy a Doug? Just get in touch, DM me. I'll take fucking peanuts for it. Just barking away. It does bite a bit as well, should I? 
Uh, he's still young. Um, they make smartest land popular opinion is Newell is one of the best players to have. An absolute talisman in the middle of the park. For me, this bit is the weak link. Doesn't take his chances. Uh, we've got three points. That's all that counts at the moment. So Nisbet, the weak link, that the kind of controversial bit there. Well, he did take his chances. Oh, he, did, he took a chance. He misses a lot. He misses a lot. That's probably the boy's point. But uh, uh, like well, striker, most strikers do, don't they? They keep getting uh, in position aye. to miss. But that's it. The, the, the chances, even the, the disallowed ones on Saturday, he's, he's had a hat trick, really. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he, he, okay, he did he score at Ross County, and it, probably that's where it's uh, that kind of things come in. But I don't think he's a weak link. Who's better than them to bring in? Uh, exactly. Do you know the other thing, Jamie? We, we've probably spoke about this when we used to do quick bang as well. The strikers, when they're no scoring, they need boys to chip in for other positions mm-hmm. in the park, and and because well, well, Boyle scored, but the, you know what I mean. Like last year, they didn't get forty odd. That. McGinnis got a few at the start of the season, but they got about forty odd goals between them. Um, the three of them up front. And then yeah. the rest had the rest had were on single figures. And like when I say single figures, on the single figures in one hand. Again, they weren't even getting they weren't even breaking four or five, these guys. Um whereas this year McGinnis started off with a few goals, but, but the rest have not got many, if any, still. Yeah, so Joe Newell needs need to start scoring to more in. goals. Yeah. For me. He gets in good positions that he just needs to start scoring more goals. Just remembered Cadden Rattle on the bar on some Saturday, no, by the way. So there's yeah. another one that could do with chipping in a couple of goals, maybe Cadden and Murphy. Uh, and the centre halves, the centre Murphy, hope we could get now he scored one. But <laughs> the, the centre halves when they're up for corners and that, they could for them to score a few more. Yeah. Uh, Need a big Rob Jones. I uh, get him <laughs> teaching them. Uh, SPFL fact says uh, Jack Ross did a great job and is our best manager since Mowbray. I think so. I, I, I honestly. As I said earlier on, it's such a difficult period and how the, the, the squad's been trimmed and all this nonsense doesn't help. I just, I, I just didn't understand. What, what do folk want? You know, obviously you want to win a cup or two and I, I get that point, but aside for that, really it's, you know, like, if one person says I want to play good football and that person will say I just want to win games, then this person will say that, you just can't get a happy medium. No, you're right. We all went we win a cup or two, but it's not like it's happened. I was talking to my brother the other day. We we're talking about cup wins. He's he's a lot older than us. Like he's in his fifties, and and he's only seen. He can't even remember seventy two. He was born, but he was he was not. So he, he's only seen like three cups as well. You know what I mean? It's it's not like they're, they're pushing out of us. I mean, so why why will I suddenly be expecting to win cups? It's probably because we're we're increasing the expectation by getting to semi finals or finals. Who are the contenders then? So post Mowbray that would come into contention. So Collins won a cup. Collins won a cup. Stubbs won a cup. The Stubbs, cup. Right. So are you taking Collins ahead of Jack Ross? No. I would not. Uh, Stubbs? <sighs> nah. Let me get you to the league. It was. No. Nah. And there was a lot of losses and you know, shitty game it was at Alloa's and all that, we lost games right. today. So you know it's not like you're the, winning the cup lost a lot over for him because I think the nice were out for him as well, weren't they? After the Falkirk, nobody being able to Falk. They were St. Johnston for that period. Yeah. Um so no, I mean it was it was brilliant that day and even a couple of seasons it was good, to, but then you're running most weeks because you're in the championship. And then you got the, the, the glory of the odd cup game against the big team. Um, so Stubbs would come close probably, but it's hard to right. it's, it, because it is, if his record isn't even better than Rossi's for win rates, considering he was two seasons in the championship, then you've got to say, well, no. Aye. I like Stubbs there. I, I thought we played good football under Stubbs as well, but like you said, there was plenty of games where we were, were pissed, do you know, and like you say, you look at some of the results. Some of the results, if Jack Ross would be getting them. I think that 3-0 yeah, game at, home, Morton, at home, mind the midweek game, Aye. when yeah. we basically went, right, we can't even win the league anymore, that, that one. And you think, the, it was just like, there was, and there was Aloe's away a couple of times, and you think, and our both, and you were going, fucking hell. Um, aye. So, but it was, it was, when it was good, it was good. But you're playing with John McGinn in the fucking Scottish Championship. So, he was well back, Stubbs. Aye. Aye. He was well back, like. Uh, Kaiser Sozzi, Rangers are a bigger rival than Hearts these days. It, it, you know, it feels like people like that sometimes, though, because they hate us. Is they probably hate us more than the Hearts do now? 
Yeah, totally. Um, other fans. I hate, I hate them and I hate it hurts in that sense and I can't stand them. Yeah. Yep. It's a funny thing, so I, I used to like uh, really like I've never obviously well, brought up to despise hearts, right? We we're all of an age where we've had to kind of go through some really fucking shit times against them. Like long runs, kind of twenty two in a row, and a lot of draws and uh, fucking Hamden defeats and all the rest. Of it fucking always been brought up to hate them, and never really had that the same with with, uh, with Rangers and Celtic. But see, the last few years, Rangers, they're just something about them just fucking annoys me. That I've got good pals who are Rangers. In fact, I've got family who are uh, who are Rangers fans. I love from dearly, you know. But see when you get to a game. Like see, at Hamden last week, you got the 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 nonsense after the game with people want to start fighting and all the rest of it and all the sectarian shit that comes out. You just like fucking yeah. grow up, like they're they're horrible. Yeah, they've created that over the since they got uh, since they went bust and started in the the bottom league again. That they've went, they've went that instead of stripping it back and saying let's start again fresh, they've went everybody fucking hates us. We'll hate them more. You know what I mean? They built a hatred around it, and the hatred's worse than it was in 2011, 2012. Now than it was then, which is mad. You would have thought that that was a chance to clear the decks and start again properly. Yeah. But they've only got one track mind with things, I know. Can like, they'll no look at like proper facts or something. They'll just take, for instance, Ryan Poachers as a thug, right? And they they all go on about my father in law. Oh, do you know? Think you can get him getting sent off all the time. Ken loses your points. I went. He's been sent off twice in the league. What are you talking about? Has he? I said, I. I said, so this is just a fucking myth that you have made up. But you see, you see them on Twitter and that. Oh, Mayor Frontman Kelly Brook, a lot of them. Uh, Leon uh, said, keeping Jack Ross long term will only improve Hibs. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to, even if he, even if he. Like, oh, I didn't come much in the corner, but if they got beat on Saturday, say, I think folk would have, the, the, the daggers definitely been a big time losing six games on the trot. But the consistency of having a manager is, can, can we've never had that, certainly no in my lifetime, to go for a certain amount of uh, time where, apart from Alec Muller, but it became like a long term manager. It's been changing managers all the time. Which then a new guy comes in, he wants to bring his own players, he wants to bring his own backroom staff. And there's no consistency there. Different ways of playing formations, this, that, players. and that. Yep. It's, it's just a merry you know, round. I actually thought that <laughs> yesterday. I was watching the Livingston Rangers game, uh, first half of that, and they said they were speaking about, obviously, uh, Van Bronckhorst and that. And they said something, I can't remember the number, but it was something like he's the 17th ma- Rangers manager of all time. And I thought, fuck, we've probably had 17 managers in the last 20 years. Aye. I bet it's not kicking ours off. It. It, it, it's an exaggeration, but I bet it's well into double figures. Yeah. Oh, it, it's been it's been any double figures in the last eleven years. Easy. Because mm. I looked at this like before. I'm talking about it. it's uh, it absolutely is. That's seventeenth in their whole well in their whole history because they're counting <laughs> back to when they first started. You came what I mean. Double history. Hi. You Can know what I mean. mean. You know what I mean. Um, William has uh, unpopular opinions. The big telly says shite. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I really like it. That. I. I, I uh, so was it the Celtic game? So this, obviously, the game was shite, but that was the first time we went where it was like the nighttime game, and I thought it looked magic. In fact, the, the women's derby, they had the them on there, but no, uh, not quite the same because they weren't showing the game. That's on right, them. just had that, isn't it? Aye. Uh, aye. I think they're good. I, I don't usually see that. I don't know, like them if you didn't want If you didn't, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? But uh, it's not a. It is an unpopular I opinion, really. Though, I didn't see the problem, but aye. Yeah. Uh, Steve McKenzie has got three. Uh, one, Joe Newell has more poor games than good ones. Uh, two, our support has too many Celtic sympathisers. And three, we shouldn't have bothered with big screens. Any of those you want to pick it? I like the big screens. And I'm certainly not a Celtic sympathiser because I can't stand them either. Yeah. I think there are many Hibs fans who are Celtic sympathisers. I think that's yeah. a bit of a fucking myth as well. It's like... But so, uh, folk gave them a bit more leeway, though. If you look at it over, even over history, Whitaker got a harder time than Brown did. Well, that's true. Purely because he went to Rangers and he went to Celtic. Because they both stayed, they both we got, both got money for them. Whitaker never asked for a transfer, actually, if anything. Um, 
and and he's not the only one. I think anybody that goes to Rangers seems to get a harder time than anybody that goes to Celtic when they come back. That that doesn't even be sympathetic to Celtic though. Just no, as no. in comparison to Rangers, Rangers it's Celtic. Aye. But then that does that not mean if you hate Rangers more than you hate Celtic, you're more sympathetic to Celtic? It just means you're more sympathetic. It doesn't mean you're sympathetic. No, it doesn't mean, uh, yeah, ah, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. like there's a scale. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was folk on Twitter, well, I was hearing folk on Twitter saying they were getting tickets for their Celtic pals and all that. On, that's uh, that. That was just a wind up. That. that was just right. a wind up. Aye. Apparently. Uh, the hips are here. Uh, again another three pointer so number one we've not produced a truly outstanding player since we've got the training centre uh, Porto might be in brackets uh, number two I'm, I'm ambivalent towards Marmite if you take or leave it I like that one <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the three the patronising football analogy guy from the Covid briefings should become a football pundit so I Is never saw the leech? Covid briefing so I think Ken oh I must be Leach but I, I never they came with the Sort of working. Uh, we've not produced a truly outstanding player since we got the training centre. And we argued, I think. 2007 or something, was it? It was just about John Collins. Was yeah, just it was Col- just Collins was nine, pretty much the day after it, aye. So when we won the Cup, so was it 2007, 2008? Then, so, then. Uh, uh, when was it? John Collins was the 4th of November, 2006. So that, yeah. that's just, so he's starting for that. So Collins. Uh, Pat Lennon, Yogi, Calderwood, Fenlon, Butcher, Stubbs, Lennon, Heckenbottom, and Ross is 10 since uh, Collins. Wow. Aye. Yeah, aye. Uh, so that's, that's uh, I also looked up the last clean sheet, and it was against St Johnston the last time we used to road. I forgot, I've just forgot to. The say it. Um, but so, two th- say we got the train set of 2008 then, to give the benefit of the doubt. So we've had it 13, 14 years. Just aye, Fraser Murray. Um, I'm not claiming these as big hits, like I'm just saying that's who who's come through it. Um, oh. Ollie Shaw. Aye. Yeah. Danny Hadlin. It's, it's, it's not a stellar list, is it? Although nah, what I would say with, with, is we've developed players that have come to the club that have been better. Oil. Aye. Cummins, Boyle was a great example actually because Boyle was nowhere near the level of player that he is to now. Um, McGinn as well. So you look at John McGinn that arrived at Hibs and John McGinn that left. He's a totally different player. Yeah. Everything about him, like physical size and his technique, everything was better by the time he left. Um, McGeoch was better at Hibs than he's been anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jason Cummins played in the youth team for a while when he came. I know he never came yeah. through the youth fully but he did play in the youth team, didn't he? And then he yeah. came in the first team, so could claim him. And Witherspoon could probably claim him. He's a double, Aye, double winner. Again, double yep. winner last. You know. Canadian internationalist. Canadian internationalist, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. uh, right, Manny Curfey said uh, his three, Scott Allen is now much more effective as a substitute. Paul McGinn slows us down and Josh Campbell hasn't actually contributed much. That's what, those were his yeah. three unpopular opinions. I think the first one, I agree with the first one, we've kind of said that already, but Scott Allen he probably is the best uh, substitute now. I, I wouldn't really want him to go, I don't think. I know a lot of folk are thinking he's on the way out and that, but I'd quite like to have him on the bench for yep. occasions like Saturday. Um, Josh Campbell, I, I see what he's saying about that. I think the lad, he's, he looks neat and tidy in that, but he's not done anything spectacular, so maybe that's what he's, he's meaning there. What was the other one? What was the middle one? Uh, Paul McGinn slows us down. I don't know if he's a th- if he's a right hand side or back three. I don't. He doesn't need to speed this up, does he? Is it if he's yeah. out of full back? Maybe he does compared to Cadden. Cadden's a bit pacier and that. But never noticed that. To be fair, I watch out for it. Any any of those you would want to pack out, Jamie? Um, no, I, I, I don't. I don't think Tom against slows us down. As I say, that I just uh, he's no there to be charging forward like uh, Orion Porteous or what have you to get into the final third. Um, so uh, what was the last one again? Campbell hasn't actually contributed much. I, I, and as I just as I was saying, I, I think that if, if he was having a, a bad game and wasn't up to it, he would notice it more because he would be making mistakes or yeah. contributing to goals against and all that. So uh, although he's no, I, I mean, I don't even know what his natural position is, 
if, if it's to be a number 10 and smashing goals and foots of the box and all that, I don't think that's his game. But he's, he's looked okay. He's never looked at a place for me. Yeah. Um, placeholder said, uh, Porteous in the last two games has been the reason we conceded goals. Shocking. Strong dislike towards him, although I recognise he is beneficial to the team. Unpopular. I think I've ever become a dislike to current players. Yeah, like I, I always struggle with that, but I'd, maybe I have players that I'm not quite as, I like as much as others, but I don't actively dislike any of them. Yeah, uh, my, my, I, my thing with, with Porteous is, and, and I like him, but um, always, and I never played at any great level, but you were always coached to be when laddies didn't let the ball bounce. And he, he seems to do that a lot. I don't know why. Instead, he's just gone through it um, to clear it. But if that's no one, I mean, and he wants to play a different way. But I, I do agree. I think the, the two goals that we've lost, well, uh, he wasn't to blame for the, the Ross County. But the the, certainly against, that's neither it was actually I. But the, certainly the goal, I don't know if it's been a late shout for me, say, at the semi final or. It's just been one aim, but when when I'm looking, I'm saying, why is he just fucking put out the park? He's, he's trying to turn his whole body to try and put, play it up the park. Just put it out. But yeah. It's easy to say when you're watching it back in hindsight. Yeah. But um, I, 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 I I certainly wouldn't want to lose him, but he is prone to a mistake. Uh, last unpopular opinion comes from Mark Skinner, who says, Lewis Stevenson's bang average, and I've no idea how he stayed at the club so long. I know Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he used to play goals with a team I played for. Good goal. What was it like? Was a good goal? Yeah, just bang yeah, he was, no, he was a he was a good goal. Like uh-huh. he's, he's quite small, Mark, but uh, he was quite a good goalie. I was surprised with him. We could, could proper get up and get uh, get to boss. It was good. You should be meant to say bang average, mate. You, you didn't start. Okay, I know. F- f- <laughs> I fell straight into that. Didn't <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> How many games did he get for him? Bang average. Bang average. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, that, thanks for sending those. I know that was quite, uh, quite interesting. Um, last thing, so we've got Rangers on Wednesday night, Easter Road. Uh, Jamie, how did you see that going? I don't think we've got any of the few for Rangers. That, that, that's, I think we've played well against them every time we've played. We've just really, for me, been cheated. It's as simple as that. Um, so I have nothing to fear. I think, it, it, especially after the performance there on Saturday against a really dogged side like St. Johnson, who just didn't let you play. We, we, I think we made more than enough chances. And I think against Rangers, uh, I, I think we've got a good shot. When I'm going to actually say we've got a win two now. Oil comes straight back in. Is he not suspended? I think he's available for things. The one game that he was suspended for. He will definitely come in. I thought it was two games he was suspended for, but. Um, I the, he'll definitely come back in. I would think. Well, what about you? What do you think it'll, the game will go? Um, well, we're playing well. Boy will be back, like you say. Um, I think that if we go at them early rather than sit off like we seem to against Celtic, go at them. Watch the Livingston. We've watched the first half of Livingston against them yesterday. They gave them problems, so we can definitely give them. They've got like the boy that got punted to Aberdeen in that up front. I mean, we've got a proper proper front to the Nisbet and Boyle international pairing and that, that we should be able to give them a bit of cause them problems we'll let them worry about us rather than the other way around so I would expect Boyle to come back in for was it did Jimmy Gullen start on Saturday probably coming for Gullen wouldn't he did. yeah Gullen did alright on Saturday ah no he did um, I, I can see us I the Rangers had a couple of tough games as well we had the European game and then Livy is not an easy game so and we had an extra day's rest on them, so maybe we um, maybe sets us up quite nicely for Just it. Just like to see us going for it early, you know, like go for an early, try and get an early goal, like um, get the, get the crowd up for it a bit and uh, no hang on to it. But you know what I mean, like you know when when they start pressing, then there's more gaps, then isn't there? So yeah, you know the stuff on Twitter about folks taking the piss at Van Bronckhurst being tiny. Yeah. Having a wee, a wee look, it's just like the uh, loads of photo jokes about little Van Bronckhurst kid doing, doing things. Is he only me? Van Stonehurst. St- Van Stonehurst. <laughs> Brilliant, man. Aye. Well, it must be weird, <laughs> weird than, uh, than I remember. I can't remember being a wee player, but th- that seems to be the kind of the running joke is that he's totally the kind of Aye, smaller yeah. than Callum Davidson, but we'll find it on the end tonight. Get him a back to back. Uh, right, that's uh, 
that's all we've got time for tonight. Thanks very much for uh, for coming on, Jamie. Colin, I appreciate your time. Thanks for listening. We will be back with um, back once again with the Renegade Master. No, that will be we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll probably be back tonight with a, a, a quick bag after the Rangers game. If I get him in time. I was going to say, uh, that's like the last time it was about midnight or something when you done aye, it last time. We might do that, we might not, we'll see, see how it goes. Um, and then we'll have short bangers on, on Thursday, so get your questions in for that and uh, we'll, we'll batter through them. Uh, until then, uh, thanks for listening we'll see you next time. Don't get water, no.